So today we are going to be covering three variations of the combined work problem. Now combined work is uh, a type of problem that you'll see in work questions. And remember, work problems are similar to distance in the fact that we always know that rate times time is equaling work, just like in distance problems, rate times time equals work. Now what's great about the combined work question is we can always stick to the same formula, allowing us to be very systematic in our approach, and thus being able to solve these types of GMAT questions very efficiently and quickly. So the formula that we're using here today is the work of one person, which we'll call WA, plus the work of another person, which we'll call WB, equals total work, which we'll call TW. Now, of course, like any rate problem, we're going to fill in our chart, rate, time, work, and now we're going to have at it. So the problem reads, working at a constant rate, Joe can paint a fence in four hours. Working at a constant rate, his brother can paint the same fence in two hours. How long will it take them to paint the fence if they both work together at their respective rates? So the first thing we want to do is we want to fill in our chart, as always. And we want to try to not to get trapped here because the first thing they tell us is that Joe can paint a fence in four hours. Now, some of you may look at that and say, you know what, that's giving us, giving us Joe's time. But in this instance, it's actually not giving us his time. It's saying he can do one job per four hours. And since he is the top row, as I just labeled, we're going to say one over four. Now, the one stands for one job. The four stands for four hours. And if we keep reading, it says his brother can paint the same fence in two hours. So just like with Joe, we're saying one job for two hours or one over two. Now, you may be wondering what else can we fill in? Well, keep in mind they're working together. And when you work together with someone, your time is going to be the same. It doesn't matter who's faster or slower but time is the same when you work together. So since we don't know what the time is, we can label that x and x, and as you know, rate times time is distance, so if we multiply, excuse me, is work. So if we multiply across, we get x over four for work of Joe, x over two for work of the brother, and now we just fill in x over four plus x over two equals one. Why am I using one? Because they complete the job. So we've done one job. As usual, we're going to multiply through to get rid of fractions here. So we have x plus 2x equals 4, 3x equals 4, x equals 4 over 3, which converts to 1 and 1 third. Now keep in mind, the original rate was in hours, so that means the time is going to be in hours. Since one third of an hour is 20 minutes, this is one hour and 20 minutes. And that is our answer right here. Now we're going to move on to two other types of problems, two other combined work problems that is. And the next one we're going to talk about here is when one person or machine stops and the other one continues to finish the job. So just like we always do, rate, time, work, um, we are going to fill in A and B. And again, the best part about what I've been teaching so far is that we're, we're able to use the same formula because at the end of the day, between machine A and machine B, which we'll read in a second, the job is going to be completed. So we have work of A plus work of B equals total work again. And so we read. Working alone at a constant rate, machine A takes two hours to build a car. Working alone at a constant rate, machine B takes three hours to build the same car. If they work together for one hour at their respective constant rates and then machine B breaks down, how much additional time will it take machine A to finish the car? So what we're given here is that these two machines are starting as if they're going to do the job together, but it's saying that machine breaks down. So the beauty is we can do the same thing for the rates that we did in the last problem. We see it takes machine A two hours to build the car, so that's one over two. Machine B takes three hours, so that's one over three. And now this is where things get a little trickier. We know that they both work for one hour together, so we're going to fill that in. 
we also know that machine B breaks down, which literally means it stops. So machine B's time is one hour. We are not putting any more time into the box for machine B. And then it's saying how much additional time will it take machine A to finish. So since we don't know what that additional time is, as always without algebra, we put in a variable. So machine A's time is actually one plus X hours. Now, of course, we multiply across to get our work. So this would be one half times one plus X, which if we brought the one half in, that would be one half plus one half X. Machine B does one third. So as always, we're gonna take our work of machine A first. We're gonna add it to the work of machine B. And the beauty is, is that the job has been completed by the time machine A is done. So again, we set it to one. As everyone knows, I love to get rid of fractions. So we're gonna multiply everything by six. By multiplying by six, that is going to cancel out each fraction in our term, leaving us with just integers. So we get three plus three X plus two equals six which is the same thing if we simplify five plus three X equals six or three X equals one X of course equals one third. Now this is one third of an hour. An hour is 60 minutes. So if we multiply one third times 60, we end up getting 20 minutes. And that, of course, is our answer. Keep in mind, they could have asked you how much total time machine A worked. If that was the case, it would have been one hour and 20 minutes. But because we just need additional time, we're solving for X and we get 20 minutes. So finally, I want to bring you to one more type of combined work question. And the best part is, I'm going to keep this trend going, is that we are going to use the combined work formula. I want to reiterate this is great news because if you can take one formula and use it for three variations of different problems, this is what's going to allow you to be fast on the GMAT. And as everyone knows, two minutes per question is what you're shooting for. So being systematic is the key. Now, again, we have our chart, rate, time, work. In this case, we're not dealing with machines, but we have Carla and Dan. So notice I already put work of A plus work of B equals one. The reason I put one there again is because they are completing a job. In this case, a load of dishes is considered one job. So the problem says, working alone at a constant rate, Carla can wash a load of dishes in 42 minutes. If Carla works together with Dan and they both work at constant rates, it takes them 28 minutes to wash the same load of dishes. Working at a constant rate, how long would it take Dan to wash the load of dishes by himself? Well, here's what we know. We know that Carla's rate is one over 42, one load per 42 minutes. Here's what we also know. If her and Dan work together, it takes them 28 minutes. Now, some people may think to do a combined rate here, but I wanna say systematic and continue to do combined work. So what I'm gonna do with that 28 minutes is I'm gonna say, you know what? This is the time they're working together. So I'm putting it in the time box. And in the previous questions, that's how we answered it as well. So what that does is that leaves us with a new box that has an unknown that we haven't seen before. And that's the unknown of a rate, in this case, more specifically Dan's rate. So what do we do? Like always with algebra, we use a variable, but we have to be careful because it's one job per X minutes. So notice it, it mimics what we did with Carla. She's one over 42. Dan is one over X, one job per X hours, meaning we don't know his rate. Now, as we multiply across the work for Carla is 28 over 42. We can reduce that to two thirds. And of course, Dan is 28 over X. Now we're gonna plug in Carla's rate is two thirds. Dan's rate is 28 over X, or excuse me, Dan's work is 28 over X. Set it equal to one. As usual, get rid of fractions. In this case now, to get rid of these fractions, we actually have to multiply three by three X because we're trying to cancel out the three and the X in two thirds and 28 over X. So when we multiply through here, we get two X plus 84 equals three X 
84 equals, excuse me, 84 equals x. Now, what we do with that 84 is we bring it right over here, and we notice that Dan's rate is 1 over 84. What does that mean? It means he does one job per 84 minutes. So when the question says, how long would it take Dan to wash the dishes by himself, we can easily put 84 minutes. Now, what I want everyone to understand is we just did three work problems of somewhat different nature, but we use the same formula each time. There are more work problems that you will see on the GMAT or different types, but this is a good way to get started to see how similarities exist between work problems, how they can have different unknowns. But either way, if you can say systematic on the GMAT, you are going to be in great shape come test day.